My brave story, some of you might know, started at the age of 19. And I went to a summer camp to serve um, some high school kids. And um, my job was to run the snack bar. And um, I went in to open a bottle during the summer. And I was pushing down on it. This is like a like bottle of, you know, shake up with seven up bottle. Exploded in my face. I dropped the bottle. I ran into the bathroom and I looked at myself. My face was gone. It started to deteriorate before my eyes. And then slowly my eyes started to close and I started drowning myself with water. Looking up, screaming, looking down, drowning myself. They um, put me into a vehicle. I was in Colorado at the time, and they put me into a vehicle, and um, so we gotta, we gotta get you to the emergency room. And so I had a woman praying over me, and she was just praying, Lord, heal her face, her neck, her eyes, and her arm. Lord, heal her face, her neck, her eyes, and her arm. And I was shaking uncontrollably, and I had my hands in a wet washcloth, um, just in like a bowed down position. And I stopped her and I said, hey, well, I do not want to be angry or mad or wonder why this happened to me. Because God has been so good in my life. At that moment, I knew that my life had changed completely. Not only was I faceless, but I was blind. And if any of you could imagine that right now in your life, and I'm sure many of you have had these tragic that have happened in your life in an instant, how life can be completely different. That was my mark in my life that things were gonna be completely different. So once they had gotten me into the ambulance and um, transported me, um, my parents had arrived and they had told my parents, your daughter will be fine. For three days, my mom and I sang praises to the Lord. In the hospital bedroom, we just sang I knew that that is all I had. That it was Christ that all that I had to surrender completely and fully to Him, knowing that my life, I did not know what my life was going to look like from there on out. And it's the power of Scripture that came alive to me. It was the power to praise Him in the midst of difficulty. It was the power of Him going, I'm going to use this, Jen. I'm going to use you through this. And literally, like those three days were insane. Insane. God was so present and so real to me, and that is something that I will never forget, and I'm forever grateful for. But to go on from there, it wasn't just that. It was three years of surgeries that I had to endure. It was every month going in at least two times to have a surgery done. Um, my eyesight did get restored on the third day, praise God. And from there on out, I was just filled with joy, knowing like, if I've got my eyesight, man, this is, the rest is going to be easy. Um, of course it wasn't, and I clung to God's word, and I was reading it every day. And um, it reminded me of when the blind, when he went to go heal the blind man. And he said, do you want to be healed? And the blind man said, yes, Lord. And he said, according to your faith, you are healed. And I resonate with that so much because that is the story of my life. I said, yes, Lord. I want you to heal. I think my story has such power in this essence of us as women. We put so much into our outer appearance. But the Lord looks at your heart, and that is what he wants. He wants your heart. And he had to take away my face and my eyesight and my hair, because I had hair at the point. And he said, oh, we got to take that too. I said, why not? I'm gonna, you gave me a new heart, you're giving me new eyes, you're going to give me a new body. Praise the Lord. And um, so my, they did have to shave my head and take skin from my scalp and rebuild my eyes and rebuild my neck. And just went through all of that rebuilding. But in the, in the midst of it, God, I mean, that is what the Lord taught me. 
is that it's about your heart. That's what he longs for. He wants all of you, and what he's most concerned about is your heart and not your outer appearance. Um, so for that, I am forever grateful. The scars on my neck, I feel it's just God's handwriting of love across me. When I show you something that is so beyond what you can imagine, and I put that, I'm just like blown away at his goodness. And it makes me view tragedy in a different way of going, gosh, when you're going through something so difficult, God is so real. And if you would stop and praise him, yes, I know you're like, John, I can't praise him for something like this, but you know what? You can praise him because he's good. He's good. Ultimately, he is in charge. We are not our own. We are God's. We are God's, and he's got it. And I felt like just during that journey of those three years, I was in just this euphoric state of, of this sweet, precious time with the Lord that I will never forget. Never forget. And um, I, I think my challenge to you guys today is to just stop and go, Lord, what is it that maybe I'm blind to? What am I not seeing? That, Lord, would you, would you let me see what you desire for me? Or more importantly, God, help me look at my heart. When my heart praise you, when my heart stop and go, Lord, thank you for who you are. Because ultimately it's about him and his glory and us we're nothing. Like, he just wants to use us to glorify his name. Um, I think reading just through scripture, I wanted to um, share with you guys, I think, my favorite verse, because it explains so much of what I had to go through. But whenever anyone turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And we all with unveiled faces, all reflect the Lord's glory, are being transformed into the likeness with ever increasing glory, which come from the Lord. For some reason, I'm having a running up. <laughs> uh, no, I am just beyond honored. Uh, when I met Carrie, I, I was just, I was like, I have to be a part of this. Like, I am about women looking at their hearts and looking through, through the things that they've been through. And if they can be brave in the midst of what is going on in their lives, like the Lord's got them, and to Him be the glory because He's going to hold you, He's going to heal you, He's going to come in and just um, break you. And there's such beauty in that broken heart of joy. That is something that I experienced in the hospital is that I was broken, but I had so much joy. And just I praise God for that. Even on the 10th day, like I went in and looked at myself for the first time and just started crying blood literally blood because I had no skin on my face. Um, just imagine blood tears coming down your face. And I was like, Mom, I feel so bad for people who have to look at me. I feel so, I am, I am not looking good. This is nasty. And I, I felt bad. I literally did because it, it, I just looked, it was like all my sin. I couldn't hide it. I couldn't conceal it. I couldn't walk around and pretend nothing happened to me because it was all over my face. And it was like, hi. Hey, Look at my crud. It's right there, right? Look, look, what, a, look what a mess I am. Um, and I think that's part of what we try to do. We try to hide our stuff. And for me, I couldn't hide it. And God was like, let it out, Jen. Be 100% authentic. This is it. This is you. And um, that's, a, that's another part of my story. It's just encouraging women to be authentic and 100% of who, uh, with all your junk, that that God wants to expose us and he wants us to be genuine and real and open in our lives and that's what I've experienced with these women is them just saying hey this is my mess and I'm gonna I'm gonna be vulnerable and I'm gonna step out and I'm gonna get some healing and that's why we've called you guys here tonight is to get some healing from the things that maybe you've um, tried to stuff down or, or hide or conceal and know that there's such beauty in um, exposure so that's it <laughs>